All right. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing good. Getting some pretty strange weather here today over the last couple of hours since last night. Got a lot of rain, warmed up pretty good, and then our uh, our lane was interesting getting out of this morning. <laughs> Going back into our property, it, the, our plow, it, it goes, and uh, when it plows, it's, it's a weird setup and things. I, I could probably explain that in some other video, but... Um, it leaves some big mounds on the on the lane and, and things and it got all soaking wet from this rain and turned into slush and I got stuck really bad and uh, so interesting morning to say the least now it's it's cold and blowing again and everything's freezing up so but uh, I'll wait for a little bit here get give people some time to come in and uh, we'll have a good time Talking about laundry and hygiene should be interesting. Laundry and hygiene. Look up something here real quick. How the hell in the world do you? Okay. All right. Okay. We'll get started here, I guess. Oh boy. All right. Okay. We'll get started with this. Uh, Put another picture over here quick. This other tab. Come on here. There. Okay. All right. Laundry and hygiene. What do you do when you're off grid and you have to wash your clothing and wash yourself? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, there's a lot of different options. Um, you know, obviously running a washer and dryer. So, uh, Brother John, you said about the, the you can run a generator and things for you know washing and drying your clothes, which is true. You can do that. Um, but uh, another option that a lot of people would do would be a laundromat, where you go and you know the coin-operated washing and drying machines. That's another option. We used to actually have to do that when we were in northwestern Pennsylvania because the water at our place where we were staying was really bad uh, because of the oil well drilling in the area and gas well type of thing and so the water would come out yellow and if you had anything white any kind of white wash it would turn it yellow so we went to the laundromat uh, right when we first got married um but uh you know you're running into some pretty decent amount of money there to be constantly going and doing that you know at the laundromat and it's not really efficient you know you really don't want to have to go to a laundromat to do your laundry when you're at an off-grid property it's nice to do it right there and there's actually a very low cost way to do it which is what you can see on the screen here which we'll get into um an off-grid washing machine that's another thing i've seen i uh, i think there was one called uh, a channel called Fouchomatic or something or Fouch family off-grid i think it's called now and they actually had a washing machine that the husband took the back off of it and he hooked up some, sort of a belt or chain drive and you could sit there and ride like a bicycle and it would move it and the, the thing would work. <laughs> Washing machine would work. Um, that works uh, as well, but uh, still think that there's a better way, which we'll be talking about here. And another option, of course, would be washing and drying your clothes at a relative's home or a friend or somebody down the road that has a one grid power. That's another option. But we don't do any of those. I'll tell you what we do. Um, we actually use one of these breathing washers like this is the type that we have right here we don't have the fancy type there or whatever but we have this one here and um 
these are an older old time thing um, a lot of the older ones you know were metal like that and um, if you go to the I mentioned it in another video the Southern Aroostook Agricultural Museum in Littleton uh, up here they actually have a display where they have some laundry type of stuff around and they had some of these plungers so they do go back in time and uh, the way that they work is if you I'll show this one kind of a little bit up close here um, it has you know little you know like a little grid there little vents and things and then up in here there's holes drilled up underneath there so when you push down with the plunger it will suck air up through and it comes out this little area right in here and so it, it kind of goes like just you can hear the air coming in and out and it pushes air through the laundry and they work really well and i mean there were times um we would actually have clothes that we would get that you know people had washed in their washing machine and went through the whole cycle and everything else and we'd just say oh, let's just wash and put them in a, in a thing of clear water and you do the plungers and you'll get dirt out of it um they're really efficient they take it easy on your clothes the ringer thing you know or the uh, not the ringer the um agitator or whatever in a washer and dryer it's just kind of takes the clothing and just you know here's my hat it just takes it and kind of goes like this with it you know that's really not all that efficient i guess it does spray some water on it but these things i'm a huge fan of the plunging and um of your wash and uh it's actually a really good exercise you get some good upper body exercise you know and we have two of them so you have one in each hand so you know um, we have we have a big setup for our laundry at, at our property um and uh so we actually have two laundry tubs and then two uh plungers for each one so you know both of us can be doing laundry at the same time really efficient you know and um it takes about you plunge for about five minutes just you know have your watch there whatever else or you know and you could just plunge like that and and uh, back when oliver was born like i said in another live stream we actually um did all of his cloth diapers that way so it definitely can be done and uh, it comes out really nice um so you have that if you have stains you can actually use one of these old vintage uh washboards and it's just I'll try to see if I can get one here with the I can't really see too good a picture there. Um, the surface is kind of you know a little bit rough. And basically what you do is if you have a stain on your clothing, you take some like we used to use Feld's naphtha, but it's kind of toxic, not real good for you, not really natural. So we try to use natural soap and things because our water just goes right out on the ground. So we use uh, lye soap. And you don't get it in your eyes. That's <laughs> not so good. But uh, lye soap is just uh, basically like wood ash and lard. And I'm not sure what else. I think that might be it. But you take lye soap and you rub it on the stained area of your clothing. And then you just take, you know, you make sure the clothing is wet. And then you just scrub it up and down on this washboard right there. I don't know if anybody's, if there's any pictures of it. But you just, you do that. And, um, and it gets the stain out. It's pretty amazing. And you do you put it over in your your wash water with your you know, laundry detergent, whatever you want to use there. Again, we've made our own laundry detergent, and we okay, you know, we'll just buy some stuff and and things, and it works fine. Um, and so I know some people could really you know some people make a big deal about the laundry detergent that you use and whatever. It's you know you can use um, borax, you can use washing soda make a mixture of the two and things and shred up some soap and put it in there. You know, there's different things that you can do. Um, so, but this is to get the stains out, these washboards, and then you use your plungers and you plunge for about five you know, minutes or so. And then you drain the water, put fresh clean water in to get rid of the soap. And, um, and then you use one of these one of these ringers like this thing right here um and you run your clothes through it and you run the just do the little handle and it squeezes all the water out of it and uh, you can do that pretty quickly and then you put it in the sink in the clean water and then you do a rinse cycle with your plungers and 
you know, if it's really dirty clothing, you might have to do two rinse cycles, but usually it's, you know, one soap cycle, one rinse cycle, and you're usually done. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll hear the stories, people say, oh, these, you know, I remember the old laundry, you know, the ringer washers and boy, they would smash buttons and, you know, bend zippers and all this other stuff. All they were terrible. Well, that's the mechanized ones. Okay. The, these hand ones do not do that. We've never had that happen. Um, why? Well, because you can adjust your tension up here with that little, this little screw thing on the top there. You can adjust it so you don't. You know, if it's really tight, you might be able to smash something, but you just keep it low enough that it's wringing the water out, um, but not smashing anything. Um, that's what we've, you know, experienced with that. Uh, we did actually have, when we bought a um, our first property in Littleton, it had an old ringer washer, and it was all just spring-loaded. There was no way that you could really adjust that model. Now, maybe some you could, but um, I remember remember my mother would tell me the story about uh how that you know when she was a little girl she'd have to feed the clothes in through that automatic ringer and she said she was always afraid she'd get her fingers caught and, and if she did it would pinch her fingers and she hated the thing well see you know it's because it's electric it's just turning and you know you're trying to get your fingers in there uh, you're trying not to get your fingers excuse me but with these it's just you're powering it with one hand and putting the laundry through with the other one and you reach around the back and you get it and it's pretty simple um and if you get your finger caught well stop ringing <laughs> pretty easy to figure that one out but um we've been doing this for years um a long time uh i'm trying to think of when we would have gotten started it's when we were still down in pennsylvania so that, that would have been 2013 as when we started doing laundry this way and um for our laundry we use um all rainwater catchment um, in the summertime. Can't really use that in the wintertime. Um, you say, well, then you could melt, you can melt snow in the winter. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever tried to melt snow in the wintertime for getting a lot of it, you come in, you have your stock pot, you know, filled with snow and you think, I'll get a lot of water out of this. And, and you put it on the stove and you have to stir it or else it can kind of melt and make a weird problem down below where it's not much water and it can start to burn the bottom of the stock pot. From experience, I can speak. <laughs> um, but you you melt the snow down, you know, and um, you get you know big stock pot full, and you get this little tiny bit of water <laughs> because the snow doesn't produce much water when it totally melts. So not real efficient to melt snow for water in the winter time. Um, but thankfully, we have a uh, spring, natural spring in the area where we can go. We can fill up our water jugs. So um, it's it's. A lot of water that's required. I, I would say that laundry is probably the biggest thing that requires a lot of water if you're doing it doing it off grid. Um, it definitely takes a lot. So, uh, but we have rainwater catchment in the summer months that we have um, a reefer trailer that it'll fill up a uh, it's about a hundred and fifty gallon um, like big tub and it'll fill that thing up in one. You know, just a regular decent rainfall it'll fill it up and then you have all that water and, and we'll use about that whole thing to do you know a load or two of laundry you say okay then what about a clothes dryer that's the easy part uh right there uh summer months you have all the free drying that you want you know out on your clothesline um, i mean i was raised that way my mother she had a clothes dryer in the house but she preferred hanging clothes out on the line and even in the winter time and she said she would actually you know she'd do cloth diapers um back when we were you know children small children she would do cloth diapering and um i think she started in 1961 i think is when our my oldest brother was born and so she was back in that era when they did cloth diapering and she said she would actually hang the diapers out and on the line in the in the dead of winter and she said she'd go out and take them down and she said they'd be these big frozen sheets you know and she'd just kind of stack up the diapers and carry them in <laughs> that way and uh, they would actually dry a little bit out there on the line but um what do we do in the winter time well we have a wood stove 
So we actually have clotheslines inside of our tiny house so we can just hang our laundry up in there. And it dries pretty quickly. So clothes drying is really not a big deal for us. Um, and you know, you even the thing of a clothes dryer, the, the machine that dries clothing, um, you'll get a lot of, you know, it's kind of rough on the clothes, it really heats them up a lot. And that's why you get a lot of lint coming off of it. Um, and there's fire hazards too with those things. So I'm not real crazy about those. You know, somebody wants to have one, that's fine. But I'm just saying that to have to try to take that and put it off grid, no, not necessary. So um, laundry is really not a problem. Uh, people have been doing it um, by hand for a long time. And uh, there's there's other techniques that you can use. Of course, there's, um, you know, they have, you can put the laundry on a rock and whack it with this wooden, you know, pallet or like a paddle or thing. And you can smack the laundry and, and that gets the soap and the water to go through it and the fibers and everything. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, but the system that we've worked out over the years, it works very well. Um, of course, there's different things that you need to know for different types of fibers, so, such as wool clothing. You don't really want to plunge it really hard. You don't put it out in the sun unless you really want to shrink, you know, your sweaters down to <laughs> really small. Um, but there's different things. I mean, we literally have washed wool blankets for, you know, a bed and then, you know, plunge them lightly, let them soak in, in a, there's a natural wool uh, laundry detergent called eucalyn, and um, which we had experience with because of our son wearing wool soakers over his cloth diapers. And uh, because wool will soak up, you know, any kind of moisture and things and works quite well. And uh, bought them actually from a woman that made them in Germany. And um, boiled wool it was, was what I'm talking about. So we had experience with eucalyn. And then you have to learn to lanolize the uh, wool, which you take some sheep lanolin and melt it with um, in hot water. And then you put it in with your wool laundry and it'll, you know, give the wool a proper protection. Um, so there's that. And you can do all that stuff by hand. Again, you know, how do you do that with a machine? So there's some real good benefits. My wife has a few silk shirts and you can wash those by hand and it's really gentle doing it by hand and everything else. So um, there are actually some things like silk, like a fine silk shirt that you should actually wash, launder it by hand. So um, pretty neat, easy way to do it. Um, very low cost too, by the way. I think of, of all the things, um, this right here would be probably the most expensive. Uh, they're fairly pricey, but you know the laundry plunger, I forget even what they are. They're not very much money. And the vintage washboard, you can find those at antique shops or on eBay or whatever else. So not much. And, of course, the clothesline, just, you know, the wire there, pretty cheap as well. Um, I saw some people up here in Maine when we first moved up. They actually had, instead of just the long clothesline, which I originally built when we first moved up here, um, instead of that long clothesline, and you have to have kind of center supports and whatever, they actually had like a frame of, uh, four by four posts and then two by fours at the top and then an angle bracing to keep it just like a frame. And then they had multiple lines going back and forth in between that. And I built one of those at our new property and it works really well. Um, pretty neat thing. So that's the laundry. What about hygiene? You know, again, a lot of people think, oh, off grid, you know, they must stink really bad or something. Well, some do, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> um, what can you do? Well, the old way of doing things would have been a sauna where you go in and you sweat and, and things and then you can go out and if there's water nearby, you can jump in that and swim in that. Or um, I've seen saunas that were actually out on top of a lake and they have a little hole in the bottom of the sauna, like a little trap door that you open up and there's a ladder where you can just go right down into the lake um, and cool off and everything. Um, you can go there's another, you know, guys will build them and they have another little room where you can go out there and you can take some cold water and, and you know, put it over yourself. Um, this is actually a future plan that we have. We'd like to eventually build a sauna. Um, uh, some friends of ours over in Estonia uh, were actually telling us about something called a smoke sauna. I thought, a smoke sauna? And I'm thinking, you know, what, like, you know, just kind of hang out in there and you get smoke or something on you, kind of like you're 
smoked meat or no, <laughs> that's not it. Um, what it is, it's the more it's more ancient version of the modern sauna. And you basically have a um, like a you build a fire inside this sauna and then there's rocks that you heat up with that. And then when all the smoke clears out of the sauna, then you go in and you pour you have to pour water over top of the rocks and then you leave again and let all that steam and all the smoke get off of the rocks. And then after that's all out and I, there's names for all that stuff. And then you go in and you pour, you, know, you can put water on the rocks and there you go. It takes a lot longer than having a wood stove that you can pour you know, with rocks on top of it. And then you pour water on top of that. Of course there's electric versions of it. And I saw this interview the one time a guy with, uh, he was um, from Europe someplace, and they said about you know the thing of infrared saunas, and the guy just said, no, there is no such thing as an infrared sauna. That's not true. <laughs> and he was saying, you know, the infrared lights are not a sauna, you know, and, and he had a big thing on that, and I tend to agree with him on that. It's not really the natural way to do it. So sauna, a sauna is a good way that you're actually pulling sweat out of your body, detoxing. Um, health benefits are really good from what I've heard. Um, so I'm very anxious to, to try that at some point in time. And of course, there's no electricity needed at all. Um, actually, our, it's kind of interesting where our property is. Our next door neighbor was from Sweden, uh, the guy that originally had built it. And he built this huge, big sauna house, you know, and, and uh, big place and whatever else. It's all run down now and everything. But um, he also built uh, wood, wooden um, hot tubs. Uh, with a little wood stove heater in them that you can heat up the, the water in the wood uh, tub there. So very interesting. What we did for a long time is we had um, this right here, a Zodi. It's a 4D batteries. It goes inside here. And then you put this little end here. You can attach this inside your shower. And you can put this little end here down into a bucket of water that you heat it up. Or they even have them that they'll you know, that you can put it into just a bucket of water or into some kind of water. And then this little propane, or I guess I'm not, that's not propane. I'm not sure of the little gas thing there and it'll heat the water up kind of an on demand thing. So as long as you have water and you have battery power, um, it will heat your water for you and you can just have as much hot water as you want and take a shower. So you need a shower stall, obviously. Um, and, uh, they work. They work pretty good, actually. Um, and we started out when we first moved to Bridgewater uh, in January of 2014. Our water system was shot when we moved in. And um, so we actually would take showers in the bathroom with, you know, a stock pot with water in it and the Zodi. It was warmed up that way and it worked. It worked good. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised how much water pressure those things actually put out. It's, you know, it can definitely get the shampoo out of your, your hair and everything. It's, you know, works pretty good. Um, so that's another option. Um, we did actually use, um, in the summer months, we would actually take cold showers with, you know, spring water. And that was definitely wakes you up. <laughs> uh, but we started out at first, we didn't really have any kind of shower stall. And so we were just the back end of this one reefer. It was open and, and, you know, not real good when you have mosquitoes and things and you're there trying to take a shower and mosquitoes were, you know, hitting you and everything and bite your, you know, well, I guess it'd be biting. Um, so then we, we actually put a shower into our laundry, the building where we do our laundry and that worked okay. But then you have the problem in the winter. You don't really want to take a, you know, ice cold shower in the winter. So there's that. Just different things, you know. You have to adapt. But I'll show you our, um, our hot water heater that we currently use. Okay, it's very affordable, very old. And if you get a good one, it will more than likely will outlive you. You want to see? It's very exciting right there <laughs> um i actually saw a video the one time of a woman in the uk and she lived on some kind of a long boat like a houseboat thing and they have them in the canals over there and whatever and she said about how that all of her hot water comes from her tea kettle 
uh, well, the British with their tea kettles, you know, the the tea time and all that other stuff. Um, certainly, she would, you know, there'd be a lot of uh, tea kettles over there. But um, so, you know, she used a tea kettle. And, of course, you don't heat it up so it's whistling or anything. But, you know, you heat it up so it's warm enough. And then what you can do is you can take a what's called, we would call it a standing shower, so to speak. You'd use just a little tiny bit of soap, or you can get like a soap dispenser with a little plastic bottle that has a thing on top, and you can push down and it comes out kind of foam or whatever, kind of cuts down the, the you know, it's not really, uh, it's not the full level of soap, it's, it's just kind of watered down a little bit. So it's not quite as, you know, you can get it off of your body easier, but what you do is you can take a washcloth, again, I'll just use my hat for demonstration purposes, put some soap on it, you know, it's, it's put some hot water and then some soap on it. And then you can just, you know, wash yourself off like that. And then, you know, wash wherever else you need to wash. And then you take the tea kettle and you pour it over your washcloth. And then you can do your rinse cycle and just have, you know, a mat or something that you're standing on so that whatever drips goes right down. And you can get pretty clean that way. It's not bad. Um, so, again, you know, so I don't know about that. What did ancient people do? What did our ancestors do before everybody had running water and electricity hooked up to the grid? Okay. And um, just something to think about. And I'll show you one other thing here really quickly. I forgot to show this. This thing here is a big thing down in Central America. They call it a, a pila. And it's essentially like a washboard. I forgot to show that thing earlier, but it's a it's like a washboard. You can kind of see right where she's standing there. That that end right there, it would have the like a washboard and things, and then they have water coming into this part here, and then they will scrub it and whatever else, and they they'll do all their laundry that way. So it's still very common in third world countries. Um, I remember I went, I was down in Honduras. I was younger in my early 20s and I had my cool motorcycle shirts, you know, I loved, always been a motorcycle fanatic and, and it would have the, you know, the ink printed on the shirt. And I remember there, you know, they, oh, we'll do laundry for you, you know, and, and things like, oh, okay. You know, so <laughs> they're taking my shirts and they're going, <laughs> you know, scrubbing them over the, the stone peel thing. And I'm, I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, I just got the brand new shirt to go on this trip and things. <laughs> they came out perfectly clean, didn't take any of the ink off. So, they knew what they were doing. Um, that was my first time seeing laundry being done by hand when I was in Honduras. So um, now we do it that way. Kind of interesting. But um, there's different ways to get clean is the whole thing. Um, and uh, you have to adapt. You have to try things or else you just never make it off grid. It's just that simple. Um, and I mean, I've went to a friend's cabin many years ago uh, as a young man and um, went in there. And I remember there that uh, we were working on the cabin, tore the hole in wall out and it was an old trailer and we were putting a new wall in and, you know, doing a whole bunch of stuff, fixing up the camp before deer season. And uh, I said, yeah, we'd probably go get cleaned up and things. And so we went and there was a spring and, pipe coming out you know and spring water is usually around 50 or so degrees so it's pretty cool well it was it was in the summertime so we were really hot but uh we went back this back road and where the spring pipe comes out and we were getting down there and just washing upper you know waist up and hair and everything else and oh man <laughs> that was cold it was really cold felt good but it, wow takes your breath away but um so that's basically it uh, there's uh, other things I'm sure people can do. I know uh, another thing that we did when I was in Costa Rica another another year, which would have been in 1993, I was in Costa Rica down there. We went out to the jungle, and they actually had gravity-fed um, like water pipes that they went into this river back in the mountains, and then it came down, and they had pipes coming out of it, and then the pipes came down went downhill to where this camp was and um and then the water fed down into those pipes and then you could go into the shower and you could you know turn the, the you know take regular showers from the pressure of the, the river back in there the, not really a river but a creek back in the woods and it worked pretty good 
and you know you, people try to get done with the work first so you know you could be first in the shower so the water that's in the pipe is nice and warm from being in the sunlight and so after it's you know goes and you first person gets a nice warm shower and everybody else after that gets the you know spring <laughs> temperature shower but i remember that so um you know there's of course other ways that you can um, put a, a water tank kind of up high and you can gravity feed and and a thermal siphoning is another thing I've, I've studied a little bit. I uh, actually knew some Amish that had a thermal siphoning system where they had their water pipes running through their uh, wood cook stove and then it would circulate, hot water would, would go up, heat rises, and so it would go up to their tank upstairs and then they could use it in their sink and whatever else. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, pretty neat stuff. So, but uh, that's our experience with the whole thing. So, does anybody um, anybody have any questions about the laundry and hygiene subject? You want to write question before it, and I'll, I'll try to answer your question. Any questions? Question, what do you use for shampoo? Well, that's a whole other story. Um, what we use for shampoo, uh, there's a lot of times we, there's a, um, I think it's Calvin Five Star sh Soap or whatever. It's, you know, pretty good natural stuff and we'll use that for shampoo. Um, we use lye soap, but you know, you, lye soap is a little bit dangerous because you don't want to get it in your eyes, but it's not a really big deal. I mean, I, I use that on my hair because I don't, I keep my hair cut really short. Um, but a, a lot of times I don't really use shampoo very much because, you know, just, I don't really, my head really doesn't get too dirty or whatever else. So uh, my wife uses a combination of, um, a lot of different natural things. She'll use actually, um, herbs. Like if you use sage, the herb, the herb sage, you can kind of make it like a tea and you put the herbs into like a tea ball, heat it up, and then sage will actually help to degrease your hair. Um, a lot of shampoos are really toxic and what they do is they actually, you know, will dry out your scalp and then your scalp will make, you know, your, your body will start to make more oil on your, in your hair. And so then you think, oh, I have to shampoo again. Well, then it's just cycle when you're constantly shampooing and things um another thing that old time people did is they brushed their hair so you get a you get a hairbrush like this one i had since i was a little boy and you just brush your hair with it you know and that's also pretty good um but you know you can certainly use any kind of shampoo we try to stay away from the commercial stuff um you ever look into shampoo ginger lily i posted a video earlier no i've never heard about that interesting um does the well water freeze if so what do you do well we don't really have a, we don't have a well at this point in time um usually it doesn't freeze um where you're going to get into problems is when you're taking it up out and it's trying to get into the your place whatever else you have to bury your lines and things up here um but, you know, there are guys that have hand pumps and whatever else. You just hold hand pump. You can go out and get water whenever you need it. Um, different ways to do it. So, borax, baking soda, soda, ash, and essential oil drops make a awesome washing powder. Yeah. For laundry. Yeah. I agree. What do you think about using fabric dye to get rid of stains or to make old clothes fabric look new? Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, for a man, how do you go about cutting your hair? I usually have just shaved mine, but my wife would like for me to have more short on sides and length on top. Any ideas? Um, I don't know if I have one here, um, but you can get a 
you know what, let me just look it up real quick. Um, I've been doing it this way for a long time, long before I knew ever knew my wife. Yeah, right here. This is what I use. That right there. It's a hair clipper, and then you have different lengths of these little combs, and you clip them on there, and um, and you can just go right through it. Just you know, I've been doing my own hair for oh boy, probably 14 or 15 years now. So it's you know it's tricky when you do the back the line going like that. You have to kind of have mirrors and you're kind of trying to do that, or uh, you have a wife or somebody else that can do it. And, Try to get it straight so you don't have the <laughs> angled haircut in the back there but that's the way i do it that's the way i do it for my son you know just trim his hair like that works pretty well so question if you desire to shave how would you go about doing it so off grid well you can use just standard razors you know like a um, you know, the regular, uh, what's the, I don't, I hate to say Gillette because they're in all that weird woke stuff and whatever, but, uh, you know, just a regular razor that you get at a store. You can do that. Um, that's one way to do it. In your off-grid seminar part three, buying land, somebody brought up finding water on land. If possible, please stay away from dowsing rods as it is a form of divination. Yeah, it is. Uh, water witching is another way that they say that. I don't mess with it. Um, you can get a hand pump for a well, but they also have a pipe valve and rope set up that enables you to lower it down and bring back up. Yeah, there's actually a, um, there's actually a, company in Holton, um, not far from here, a little bit north uh, east of us here in Patton, and um, Bison Water Pumps, Bison Water Well Pump, I think is what it's called, and they do stainless steel pumps, and those things go down really far. Um, they work really good, and they, they can be outside in the wintertime, and you can actually, if you have a standard drilled well, you can actually get the Bison Well Pump and put it right on top really good bison water pumps uh, if you want to check into that anybody out there that's interested you know power goes out if you have a bison water well pump it doesn't matter you can go out and get all the water you need out of your own drilled well um so question how does washing your hands throughout the day work without running water do you find you have to leave your hands fairly dirty for convenience sake washing only truly need um that's actually funny that'll be um you know what i don't think i have that in the, in the thing tomorrow um i'll look up something else here i mean you can just do i'm using google and a lot of people don't like google which is fine um but I'm just showing you how easy it is to find this stuff if you know what you're looking for a Reliance water jug um, is what I, this is our running water <laughs> system. Um, see if there's one with actually has the spout out. But this is a standard off grid, to, you know, type of practice. You can, uh, you can't really see any with the, we use the square ones here. We use other ones as well, but these work the best. The Aquatainer there. Um, that kind of shows it right there. It has a spout and you just, you go and you get your water in there and then you put it on a, you know, right beside your sink or whatever. And then you can just turn the faucet on and you wash your hands and it's just like having a regular faucet. And, uh, it's just that, you know, when they run out of water, then you have to fill them up again. And of course it gives you really good exercise when you're carrying the things they are pretty heavy and, you know, picking them up and putting them on the sink thing, but that's what keeps you in good shape. Um, You, you ever looked I, to using a pool pump to draw water from a well? It is used in Brazil. Pool pump, I've heard of that. I think I know what you mean on that. 
Um, hmm. I'd, I'd have to look that up, but I think I know what you're talking about there. Um, but another good or interesting thing there. What about a natural alternative for dandruff? I have a bed, which is why I usually just shave mine off. Uh, well, dandruff is a is a nutritional thing, actually, if you study it. Um, your skin cells on the top of your head are, are getting dry up there. So there's a very easy thing to do, um, which is actually a scriptural thing, where they were anointing their head with different types of oils. And if you have, you know, starting to thin back in here, like I'm starting to do, uh, what you can use is actually a rosemary essential oil, if that'll show up there. 100% pure rosemary essential oil. And um, now essential oils is the brand. And you just take this off and put a little bit on your hand and rub it on your head. Put a little bit more on. You do a couple times. You don't have to get it so your head's dripping with oil or anything. But um, you can also use it for your beard. And it helps your beard to grow quite long. Um, it's very good for your hair. You can also use uh, jojoba oil, cedarwood oil. Um, those are all good for hair growth. Uh, argon oil. Is it argon oil? I forget the other name of the one oil. But there's a lot of different um, essential oils that you can actually put on your hair and, you know, brush your hair and things like that to get it worked in to the hair. And it will actually help with your scalp up there and everything else. I think um, there's some good videos as well. I think Eric Berg, Dr. Eric Berg here on YouTube has some videos about the thing of nutritional things for dandruff that you can take. Um, okay. Uh, do you use a form of a natural deodorant antiperspirant? Um, you can use baking soda. Um, yes, I do. I don't use store-bought deodorant. Um, you can use baking soda. You can use, uh, um, I even use like a white vinegar, like a spray. That works sometimes. Um, but uh, again, you know, on the issue of sweat, you have to understand what is sweat. Sweat is your body's uh, detoxing system pushing out the harmful things that we all face. I mean, if you have, even if you have a natural diet, you're still going to be hit by pollutants in the environment, be it the exhaust from vehicles going by or whatever, and your body has to push that out. And so the more you detox your system, the more natural foods you eat, the less you're going to smell, quite frankly. Um, so you get off grid, you, you get it out into nature. You're not going to be having the big sweat problem that you would, you know, if you're eating a lot of toxic foods and living in the city. Okay, that's another thing to think about there. Um, but uh, another thing that you can use, by the way, as a, as a good powder uh, for chafing and, and whatever else you can make your own you can make a um, take an organic cornstarch and it's that works good by itself but we actually add there's a there's an herb called yarrow <clears throat> yarrow and to show you what yarrow looks like there's the flowers on it but it's a kind of a feathery looking there's a picture of it right there, sort of like these little feathery looking things. They smell, they actually smell like rosemary and um, you can dry them. They grow all over our property there. I've seen them all over the place on the East Coast. I don't know about out in the Midwest or other countries, but um, you dry the yarrow and grind it into a powder and then you can put it with your cornstarch. And if you have any kind of rashes or anything else, the yarrow combined with organic cornstarch will take it away. Um, really good stuff. So, um, okay, get back up here to some of these other ones. Do you have a fridge and how do you power it? Yes, we do. We have two of them. Um, I'll be bringing that up in a future video. Um, we power them by solar. They're just small ones, but we actually have a unique system for the winter time. Um, Uh, links for the items you're talking about, but what about the rosemary oil? I need some. Uh, it would be on eBay probably. Uh, and it smells really good too, by the way. I, I'll say that about rosemary oil. This stuff here, um, uh, we're also really big into essential oils. There's some really good stuff with them. Um, there's been times I've literally been having a headache and I just think, 
oh man, my head's killing me. And I, oh, that's right. I have to put some rosemary oil on my hair, you know, just to, you know, keep the bald spot back there, you know, from growing. <laughs> and, uh, and I put some on and it takes my headache away. So that's the, another benefit of that. Um, frankincense is actually another one that will take away a headache just by rubbing it on your head, but really expensive. That's why when they brought it to Jesus when he was a little child, it was a really good gift. You know, frankincense is really a lot of money. Um, just a small little bottle, bottles like $50 or something. Pretty expensive. Uh, what about solar panels? I'll cover that in another video. Um, how do you feel about septic tanks? I don't like them. I will talk about that in another video as well. Uh, <clears throat> do you think it's a good idea to buy my Patriot food supply? I've been thinking about purchasing emergency food supply. Absolutely, without a doubt, no. Um, they are filled with uh, preservatives, totally toxic, real bad stuff. Um, I actually knew of a um, a um, special operations guy. His name was Gary Goldman, and he was talking about the whole thing of MREs and a lot of the the stuff that has this, you know, it'll last for 40 years or whatever. And he said he knew of a family that was actually practicing survival type of stuff. And they were living just completely on that survival food. And he said they, they were coming down with all kinds of sickness and disease and because they were, you know, just nutrition deficient and, um, you know, anemic. And I mean, it, it got really bad. Um, no, I'd stay away from that stuff. I mean, you know, if you have a real bad power outage or something and you have to eat it just to survive for a day or two, well, maybe. But um, foods that you can, can stock up on would be pastas. They don't go bad. Oatmeal, barley, um, like rolled oats, rolled barley, um, uh, beans, dried beans, canned beans, certain types, um, things like that. I mean, there's there's dry goods that will last for a long time. You don't have to worry about it. That's another issue, though. Um, question. Most soaps dry out my skin out. How would I create soaps that don't dry my skin out? And how do I make my own lotions? Um, well, that's stuff. That's that's a big one. I can't really get into some of that. Lye soap. I We like lye soap very much. And, and there's different types of soaps out there that you can get into that are pretty good. Um, do you know about hyperhidrosis because my adrenal gland is stuck on an emergency pump and I sweat so much it literally ruined my life about a decade ago and it burns armpits like red ants um, no I don't really know much about that I would check into that um, in terms of uh, it sounds to me like there's some chemical stuff going on with you perhaps you know, I would, you know, try to detox in terms of uh, eat natural foods and try to sweat, you know, actually sweat that stuff out and whatever. Um, but, you know, a lot of that stuff you're just going to have to try to research on your own, you know. So. Um, sprouted rolled oats are great. Yeah, that's a basically a technique we've, we've done that where you let them you know you soak them and then they they start to slightly ferment and then you can cook them like that Weston a price they you know, have some good information out on that um, more healthy for you it actually fills you up a little bit better so um, trying to think if there's anything else I've missed in this but uh, these water jugs right here, the Reliance water jugs, again, you know, uh, once you start to, to live off grid, you'll you'll realize how much water you've wasted. <laughs> and so the thoughts of, oh, you know, how can I, you know, take a shower and, and, you know, go through 50 gallons of water or something, you know, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. And, and um, even flush toilets, which I'll be talking about in the future, one of my parts, seminar parts and what to do about. Um, you know, going to the bathroom, where do you go to the bathroom? The thing of outhouses and composting toilets and whatever else. We talk about that in another 
one of the seminar videos. Um, but even, you know, flush toilets use an incredible amount of water, especially when people, they, they just flush them after every time they use them. You know, that's not how I was raised. Um, you know, my dad used to always say, you know, that there was an old saying, he'd say, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> so I'm a country boy. What can I say? But the uh, first time I remember as growing up, my dad would always say that, you know, if it's yellow, let it mellow. And I was just let it in the toilet there until a couple people go and then you can flush it. And uh, first time I saw was at a store and I saw this, you know, soda pop and it was mellow yellow. And I thought, what is that? <laughs> Got a little worried there until my parents explained what it was. Um, okay, what about rinsing soap off of dishes? Do you use the same water jug you use to clean your hands at the sink? Yes, we do. Yeah, what about TV? You can't be off grid without a TV, joking, of course. Uh, that's the best part about being off grid, actually. Um, Question, Home Depot sells rainwater collection containers. Should I buy the Home Depot ones or look elsewhere? You can buy the ones from Home Depot or other ones like that. It's fine. Just make sure you don't get some kind of a thing that had, you know, oil in it or something toxic like that. Um, you don't want that. Tips on oral hygiene and tooth care. Um, we actually had some people send us some stuff. Could you get the thing up there? There's the blue and the green container. See them right there? The little jars up there. We had some people send us some stuff here. Yeah, just get them both. Okay. That one and that one. Thank you. Um, and I don't know anything about these, but, um, toothpaste and toothpaste and, uh, this one here has colloidal silver, um, dietary grade, but calcium bentonite clay, coconut oil, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. In other words, Himalayan salt, menthol, pearl powder, peppermint, essential oil, clove, essential oil, um, and then this one over here doesn't have quite the minty thing there or whatever, but it's colloidal silver and things. I just haven't, you know, we have, have our own system of, of uh, taking care of our teeth. And so I haven't had a chance to try these yet, um, but definitely interesting. There's, again, you can study, there's a lot of different things that will help out your teeth. Um, you want to get, if you get like, a, you want to have peppermint oil to put in with your coconut oil or things like that you should really try to get a food grade one not just the ones that are used for aromatherapy um and um we got one that was double distilled or something like that food grade peppermint oil really potent stuff so you just put a few drips of that and we'll just get an old jar of coconut oil and you heat it up by the stove or whatever and, and it liquefies the coconut oil liquefies you put a few drips of peppermint oil in and you're good we used to put um baking soda in but yeah, not really. We're not really big on baking soda um, because it's technically a chemical. So, um, but I mean, we, uh, Oliver and I, we use coconut oil with a little bit of peppermint oil, sometimes just straight coconut oil too, to brush our teeth. And then my wife actually uses a uh, tooth powder. Uh, a lot of people might not remember that, but people in the past actually use tooth powder. It's a dry powder and it's, you know, uh, ground clothes. Um, a little bit of charcoal or uh, activated charcoal. Um, there's a couple different things. It's Dr. Christopher's brand of uh, tooth powder. And you, you know, you get your toothbrush wet and you put a little bit of the powder on it and it turns into like a paste. And then you brush your teeth with that and no cavities. We don't get cavities. We used to get them all the time. I was a boy and um, literally had a dentist when I was young. Um, you know, my son's age, maybe a little bit older than that. Dr. Caldwell is what his name was, and um, he did not use Novocaine. <laughs> I kid you not. It was rough. 
you go to the dentist and it was oh i hope i don't have any tooth you know any cavities or whatever and and he you know he drill them out no novocaine or anything and uh you'd think that that would you know inspire me to brush my teeth and not eat sugar and whatever else and things you know, i did brush my teeth but uh, i was fluoride toothpaste which is really bad stuff um and you know you get the non-fluoridated toothpaste the Yasun brand and, and some of these others, Tom's natural toothpaste. We used to do that as well. It's expensive and it still has toxic chemicals in it. So you can make your own tooth care type of thing. Um, really not that hard to make your own. So yeah. And you can do oil pooling as well. That's another thing people do. Um, yeah, no Novocaine, shoot me in the face. Yeah, <laughs> it was rough. I remember he tried to he tried to distract us by asking us if we had seen any mountain lions out on our property in you know southeastern Pennsylvania. There's been mountain lions, you know, and that was the point. Where mountain lions? Is this ah? You know, did you see any yet? Any, have you even seen any? <laughs> oh boy. And of course, you know, the just the old gray mercury fillings and things which I have in my teeth now. And you know, I know that that's not the healthiest thing. And <laughs> so I mean, believe me, if if you're out there and you're thinking, you know, boy, Brother Brian sure has everything figured out naturally, you know, natural health wise, whatever. It's because I've had a long life of a lot of mistakes, <laughs> a whole lot of mistakes. So. Yeah, I've never, I've seen the thing about hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, never really used that much. Do you have suggestions for natural skin care, for example, if you struggle with acne? Um, no, it's acne is more of a nutritional thing if you have that. Um, again, you know, you can look up some of the stuff. Uh, Eric Berg's really good on that. He has a lot of good stuff about that. Um, what about a, a root canal? Should I just pull out my tooth? Um, uh i pulled out one of my teeth one time and uh, that was not fun um not fun at all it's actually right down there i don't know if you can see it right there not good very painful so um you know dentists have their purpose and whatever else i guess but the root canal thing eesh, you know Try oil pulling. I mean, there's if you get your nutrition really fixed up good, I've actually heard that you can regrow teeth and things. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, Weston A. Price talked about that. He was a dentist back in the early 1900s. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. It'd be nice if it was you know, true and everything, but I think Josh, Dr. Josh Axe talked about it one time as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, question kind of unrelated, but do you know any way I, of any way I can cure my chronic social anxiety? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't. I'm not sure, you know, what to advise you on that. Uh, you know, there, when it comes to being a Christian, you, you have to look at things and you have to say, okay, there's a couple different things that can affect my health and can affect the way I look at the world and whatever else. First and foremost, you have the spiritual. Okay, you can be attacked spiritually. That can mess you up bad. Um, you can really get nervous about things and whatever else. The devil's attacking you. Um, read the Bible, play the right kind of music, sing hymns. Um, that's important. So there's that. The second one would be nutrition. Okay, so you, you look and you say, am I eating a bunch of junk foods that are going to be spiking insulin and making me feel really weird and, and off? Um, 
get your nutrition fixed up. And then the third one would be environmental, okay, with uh, electronic frequencies. If you're in an area where there's 5G towers and whatever else, that can really mess people up. Some people have greater or lesser um, sensitivities to electricity. Uh, that's a whole other subject. You know, again, you, a lot of people just, you have to do your own research on that. That's all I can say on that. Um, and pray. That's the main thing. That's kind of goes with the spiritual thing in the beginning there, too. So. Um, but that's going to be it for today. And uh, tomorrow, or not, excuse me, not tomorrow. I guess it'll be Monday. I'm going to take some days off here. We have some work to do. Um, but on uh, the next one, we will be talking about um, finding water which kind of goes along with these jugs here, um, what to do about having water in, a, in an off-grid situation, things I've learned, things we've tried, and um, what to say about that. So thank you to everybody out there um, for watching the videos. Um, you can do the like button thing. It helps the video to not get you know, buried under YouTube Censorville. And um, so we'll see everybody back on Monday, I guess. We'll take up to the off-grid seminar again. So that will be it. Thank you, everybody out there, for watching and for your kind words of encouragement.